Greetings, my name is Mike and welcome to the video. And today I'm really excited to show off this new release of Dagger Hilt. Now this is an extension on top of Dagger 2 which is specific to Android. So it aims to help with a lot of the Android side of Dagger 2. And for me, I know there is a lot of bo boring boilerplate code setup that you have to do for Android and Dagger 2. So this looks like it'll get rid of a lot of that. I say looks like because it's still in the alpha release so stuff can change but it's looking very promising so far. So I just want to show you my demo app quickly. I'm going to basically be migrating from the existing Dagger stuff for Android to what the new stuff will hopefully look like. And I think you will be smiling like I am by the end of it, hopefully. So the existing setup looks a bit like this, where you would have your application class and you would make it implement some interface here, it has Android injector. Then you have this dispatching Android injector field and then you would end up constructing your component over here and injecting it and you would have to return it over here as well right who even knows what's going on there and then you would of course have your app component which is sort of normal dagger stuff where you would have a component class and you would import the android module and then whatever other modules you're using and then you would have a factory or whatever that's not too important and i've put it all in one file by the way just so it's easier to read and you would have some modules here in your app where you would if you were using a view model, you would have to have a custom view model factory so you can inject view models. And then you would have this contributes Android injector thing and then a binding for your view model as well. And then of course you would have that custom view model factory that I mentioned just now, nothing too interesting in there. And then in your activity, you would have um, an inject field of course, when you want to inject stuff into it. And then you would have to call Android injection dot inject all over the place. And if you don't do that, you'll have crashes because nothing will be set. And then of course I have a view model here. Again, it's in the same file just to make stuff simpler, but I have a view model and I'm injecting a repo into it as well. And the repo just returns, um, some static data. So it's not really that interesting over here. Um, but that's what we'll see just now. And Let's just run this and see. It's a very, very boring app. It just has two text views in it, basically. Um, this one is a normal text view and then there's a custom view here, which I'll show you why I want to mention that shortly. All right, but let's actually go and clean this up and migrate to Hilt now. So the first thing we're going to do, as per usual, is open the build.gradle and add some dependencies. I'm just going to copy them because I'm lazy. So it should look something like this in your existing implementation. We have like five of them or something silly. So we can now just replace that with these two base dependencies. And luckily they also have other dependencies to help with the view model injection, which you'll see shortly. So I'm just going to import those as well. You'll see that these are the, in the dagger namespace, but these are part of Android X, which is cool. And they are all alpha. So just keep that in mind, but they've also done some extra gradle magic. So there are a few more things we have to add. Like we have to apply the Hilt plugin up here. And then in your top level build.gradle, there is one more thing and that is a class path dependency, whoops, that you have to add over here. Probably a good idea to extract this to a variable like we have for the Kotlin version. So you can just change it once and it'll apply everywhere, but I'm too lazy to do that. <laughs> so let's just go and sync that and we can get all those dependencies and we should be all set to go. Cool, that's done. So I can just get rid of those. Now we can start with the actual interesting stuff. I'm going to start by opening up the application class itself, right? The custom app. And you'll see we have a red here because again, we changed the dependencies a bit, but I'm going to go and get rid of everything that's red because it's not needed anymore. And if you look carefully, that is pretty much this whole class body because I don't have any other stuff in here. So I can just go and delete all of that and fix up the imports as well. And all we need to do is we annotate the app class with at hilt Android app. And it pretty much takes care of all of that for us, which is pretty awesome. Next, I'm going to go and open the app component class over here. Again, we'll have some red and if it's red, just delete it, right? That's my philosophy. So the whole app component thing is kind of boring and we don't really want to write that. So we can just get rid of it like that. Pretty straightforward. <laughs> and we have contributes Android injector as red as well. We don't need that as well. So pretty nice. And just go and clean up the imports. Now the app module is sorted, but there is one more thing we have to do. It's not used in any component as you can see. So to fix that, we can just say at install in 
you'll see that's a Hilt annotation. And then where do you want to install this module? Well, we want to install it in app component, application component like that, uh, class. So that will go and install this module in the default application component that Hilt implements for us, which is pretty cool. Next, we can go to the activity class and we'll have more red in here because we don't need to call this anymore. But what we do have to do is say at Android entry point on the activity class itself and fix the import. And that's basically all we have to do to uh, make activities and fragments injectable. You just say at Android entry point and then it will generate the code for us, which is pretty awesome. Now we're not quite done with the cleanup yet because if you remember, I mentioned that there is some view model stuff that it helps us with, which is why I added that extra dependency. So what we can do is we go back to the app module over here and we don't need this view model factory anymore because it's taken care of. And we don't need the view model binding because again, that's taken care of for us. So the only thing we are left with in this class is the actual important things that we do care about, which is binding the repository implementation to the interface, right? I think that makes sense because that's one of our classes. So we need to tell Dagger how this class works and things like that. But I've gotten rid of all the activity and view model stuff from here, which is pretty cool. Almost done. I just need to go back to the view model class. And instead of saying at inject on the constructor, I say at view model <laughs> inject, almost forgot there, right? And that is basically a special annotation that says this is a view model that needs to be injected, not just any other class like a repository or something, right? And finally, we can get rid of the view model factory injection over here. And we can now just simplify this to buy view models as well. If you don't have access to this extension, you can also do it like this, where you will create a view model provider and you just say, get me the main view model. Cool. But anyway, I'm going to stick with this one and hopefully I've done everything correctly. So let's just go and give it a build and see that it does work. Again, the sample app is really simple. Uh, on the text view, I'm just setting the text to the data from the view model, which is just coming from the repo. So it's just basically ensuring that the components are actually working together. And it does look like the build was successful. So let's go and install it on the emulator and hopefully nothing changes here. <laughs> hey, there we go. So as you can see, it's exactly the same, but that is good because it means it's still working as before the migration. So pretty cool there. And it does allow us to get rid of a lot of code. I mean, remember how big this app class was in the app component. Now it's just simplified a lot to only the stuff that we care about, which is awesome. Now there is one more thing that I want to show off, which I found really interesting. Um, this Hilt extension allows custom views to be injected as well, which I know was quite a pain point before with the existing dagger. And now it is actually possible to inject custom views. And to be honest, I'm in two minds about this because it is awesome, right? Adding that to custom views and having support for it. But also on the other hand, custom views really should be quite simple. They shouldn't be doing too much within the custom view itself. At least that's what I think. And I've read on the Android pages. <laughs> you should be getting all the data and stuff in the view model of your activity and fragment and then just passing it to the view. But anyway, that's maybe another discussion for a whole other uh, video, but I'm just going to show you how to actually inject custom views. So I'm, I have this little custom view class, which is really simple. It's just a text view inside, but it's still going to help illustrate the point. Now, all that you need to do is again, you just say at Android entry point on top of the custom view, and then you're pretty much done. And just to show that it works, I'm going to inject um, the repository. Uh, what did I call it? Some repository like that. Please don't do this. You should really use the view models, but just for demo purposes. And then I'm going to just over here, I'm going to use the repository's data and display it on the UI. Um, join the array to a string like that. Um, yeah. So I'm just going to take the injected repository's data and show it on the UI. Now, important note, any activity or fragment that you use a custom view in that has Android entry point on it, you also need to put it on that activity and fragment, right? Over here, I've got an Android entry point, but if I didn't have this here, the app would crash at runtime because it needs to be there, right? Let's just go and see that it works. So on the emulator, this should change now from to do to hello world because it's getting the repository data. 
So let's have a look. And I get a compile error. Oh, I have a compile error because I forgot this extra other step. I th I'm hoping this is because it's still an alpha, but I remember I had to add this extra little code block in the build.gradle file, which is like this. There seems to be some badness in one of the Java Poet versions or something. So you have to just override it like that and sync, because you can see it's generating invalid code here. <laughs> but it's, it's an alpha, remember. So let's just try and rebuild that. <laughs> All right, successful. And let's see. Yes, there we go. <laughs> so we're now populating this with the repositories data instead of the to-do string. So you can see that we are successfully injecting the repo into the custom view, which is a sentence I hope I never have to say again, but you can actually see that it does work. So yeah, that's pretty awesome. I'm really excited for this new Dagger release, Dagger Hilt. I hope it comes to a stable release fairly soon because I want to clean up a lot of the code that I have. And as you saw, it does allow you to delete a lot of stuff, which is going to be awesome. Again, this custom view stuff I'm in two minds about because you should try to keep them simple, but I'm just going to leave it at that. <laughs> so that's all I've got for this video. A really simple app, but it just shows off the power of Hilt and what you can actually clean up in your code. So again, hopefully it comes to stable really soon. But anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed and hope you are as excited for this as I am. Cheers for now.